Welcome back, chemists. We are now moving into another gas law. So this is called the ideal gas law. So today, you'll be expected to be able to explain what an ideal gas is, calculate an unknown pressure, temperature, volume, or amount of gas using the ideal gas law equation. So let's talk about what ideal gases are. So ideal gases are gases that are said to follow all assumptions of kinetic molecular theory. We also say that an ideal gas is considered to conform to all the gas laws or all the properties that we've observed at this point. Up until now, we've only changed the variables such as pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas. In each of these cases, though, we assume that the amount of gas is constant. So the combined gas law is now going to be modified to include the amount of gas by including the variable n. So the ideal gas law is the gas law that relates the amount of gas in moles to the volume it would occupy at a particular temperature and pressure. It's almost like a snapshot of the gas at a particular time. There's no initial and final conditions here. This is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, where Pressure is always going to be an ATM, and we'll talk about why in a moment. V stands for volume in liters, always going to be in liters. N is the new quantity that we talked about where this relates the amount of moles of a gas. R is called a constant. It's called the ideal gas constant. And so this is ultimately the reason why you need to have these units be specific. Because if you notice, you have liters, times atmosphere over mole times Kelvin. So that's why you need to have the um, volume in liters, the pressure in atmospheres, uh, the amount has to be in moles, and the temperature is always in Kelvin. Now, there are different values for the ideal gas constant, for example, like relating uh, you know, kilopascals or millimeters of mercury, but just to make your life easier, um, to help chemistry students everywhere, we usually focus on the one that incorporates ATM. However, you can absolutely use the other ones, but those obviously wouldn't be given to you. Now, the other thing that I want to caution you about is this is often called the picky law. So as I mentioned, the units have to be what you see here. It's, they have to match the ideal gas constant. If they don't, then you're going to run into some problems. So here's an example. It says, at what pressure would 0.212 moles of gas occupy at 6.84 liters at 89 degrees Celsius? Just like we always do, I am going to list out all my variables. And you may say, how do I like infer whether this is going to be an ideal gas law problem or one of the other ones? Well, you can tell because we're relating the amount of gas right here. If you see the fact that you have moles, that's telling you you must use the ideal gas law equation. So we're solving for pressure. We've got the volume, the moles. R, again, is a constant, so it's always going to stay known. And then we have the temperature, and we're going to add 273 to that. Now, I always like, when I list everything out, to do my check to make sure all the units are what they need to be. So we've got our volume in liters, so that's cool. We've got our moles. We've got our temperature. This looks great. So I think we're now ready to go. So I'm going to now plug in this information, just like we always do. And then we should get that our pressure is going to be 0.92 ATM. And it, again, the reason why it is an ATM is because this ideal gas constant has the unit of ATM in it. So that, that is why you'll see that be ATM. Here's another example. So it says, at what temperature would 52.3 grams of methane occupy at 65.7 liters and 184 kPa? So again, this problem is relating an amount of gas. And so that's why, again, we have to be using PV equals NRT. So we've got our pressure. We've got our volume. Now, if you're looking for moles, you'll notice that you actually don't have that listed. However, what you do have is grams. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to solve for moles by using those grams that we have there. And then we've got our R value 
and we're solving for T. So we want to make sure our units are appropriate. So notice that our pressure unit is in KPA. So we can't have that like that. We need to have it in ATM. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert it into ATM by doing the following conversion. And then also our moles, right, are not in moles. It's instead in grams. So I need to convert that into moles by using that molar mass, right? And then there's our answer. Perfect. Okay. So now what I want to do is plug and chug. So I'm going to plug in all this stuff just like we usually do. And then you'll solve algebraically and you should get a temperature of 447 Kelvin. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you some insight as far as how to use the ideal gas law. Again, as soon as you see your relating amount, you know right away you're using the ideal gas law. Thank you so much for watching.